They were dying one after the other. A few sneezes here, some neck twisting there, and within days I was staring at my birds decrease in number one by one. My once healthy broiler flock was collapsing fast. I tried dewormers, I changed feeds, I cleaned out the whole poultry house, nothing worked. Until one afternoon, a vet walked into my farm and asked me a simple question. When did you last vaccinate these birds? I stood there, speechless. I had missed some vaccinations. And that's how it all made sense. My broilers were dying from preventable diseases. Diseases that a simple, low-cost, easy-to-administer vaccine could have stopped cold in its tracks. Since that day, I've never lost another bird to Marix Gumboro or Newcastle, because now I follow a strict, scientifically-backed vaccination guide for every batch of broilers and layers on my farm. And today, I'm going to give you that exact guide. Let's start with the basics. Vaccination is the most powerful weapon against poultry diseases, especially viral ones like Newcastle, Marex, infectious bursal disease, and foul pox. Unlike bacterial infections that can sometimes be managed with antibiotics, viral diseases have no cure. Once your birds are infected, it's a ticking time bomb. That's why we prevent, not treat. And that prevention starts from day one of the chick's life. Now, the vaccination schedule is not one size fits all. It varies depending on your location and the specific diseases circulating in your area. However, there are some core vaccines that should never be skipped. Whether you're raising broilers for six weeks or layer hens, whether commercial or backyard, for 18 months and beyond. For broilers, your vaccination schedule begins right from the hatchery. On day one, vaccinate against Marix disease if the hatchery hasn't done it. By day seven, you should give Newcastle disease vaccine using the Lesota strain, either through drinking water or eye drops. If you're in an area where infectious bronchitis, also called IB, is common, use a vaccine that has a combination of both Newcastle and infectious bronchitis. On day 14, it's time for the Gumboro, also called infectious bursal disease vaccine, which helps protect the immune organs of the chick. Repeat the Newcastle Lesota again at day 21, and if needed, a booster of Gumboro too. That's your full core schedule for broilers, simple, effective, and protective. Remember, broilers have a short life cycle, so the goal is to arm their immunity quickly before they face disease pressure in the environment. Now let's talk about layers and backyard chickens, which are on your farm for over 18 months, meaning they need more long-term protection. Start just like broilers, day one Marix, day seven Newcastle and infectious bronchitis, day 14 Gumboro, day 21 booster for Gumboro and Newcastle, and then additional vaccines as the bird matures. Around week five to six, vaccinate for foul pox, typically through wing web jab. At week 8 to 10, introduce foul typhoid and infectious coryza if your region is prone to them. Before point of lay, around week 16 to 18, you must give a final Newcastle booster and, optionally, egg drop syndrome vaccine to protect against drops in production. Layers also benefit from infectious bronchitic repeat doses every three to six months especially in high-risk zones. Repeat doses for Newcastle are also preferred after every two months in areas prone to the disease. Keep records, follow the timeline, set reminders on your phone on the actual dates to vaccinate your birds so as to make sure you do not miss a dose. And most importantly, observe your bird's health before vaccinating. Sick birds should not be vaccinated. Are you tired of seeing your chickens struggle with diseases? Frustrated by low egg production or poor quality? Do you wish your broilers would grow faster and stop worrying about the effects of heat stress and those nasty worms? As an organic poultry farmer, 
you know the value of natural solutions, but finding reliable information can be a real headache, right? As Agribusiness Insider, we have made you an organic poultry ebook. This ebook is specifically designed for farmers like you who want to use readily available organic products to keep their chickens healthy, get more eggs, and fatten your broilers organically. What do you get when you buy this ebook? 49 different organic products you can use for your chickens, meaning that you can finally say goodbye to expensive and potentially harmful chemical treatment. Each product comes with a simple step-by-step -step preparation procedure. It's written in easy-to-understand English with a clear and simple layout. We provide specific dosages for broilers, layers, and even indigenous chickens exact among amounts to add to water feed or give directly the best part this ebook is backed by research with references from peer-reviewed studies so you can confidently implement these time-tested remedies knowing they are scientifically supported to get your copy click the link in the description of this video and transform your organic poultry farm today <laughs> So how exactly should you administer these vaccines for best results? First, understand that different vaccines have different methods. Some are given via eye drops, others through drinking water, some by injection, and a few by wing web puncture. For the average farmer, the most practical method is through drinking water. But even this simple method can go wrong. Start by withdrawing drinking water from the birds for about four to five hours before vaccination. This ensures that when you offer vaccine water, every bird will be thirsty enough to take it in quickly. Next, never use chlorinated water to mix vaccines. Chlorine kills the live attenuated virus in the vaccine, rendering it useless. Use clean, non-chlorinated water, preferably boiled and cooled. This does not mean that boiling chlorinated water will remove the chlorine. Avoid chlorinated water in vaccines at all cost. When diluting the vaccine, keep the bottle submerged in the water before opening it. This is because vaccines are sealed under pressure. Opening them in air may cause some of the vaccine to vaporize and escape. Always mix inside the water to retain the full dose. Once mixed, offer the vaccine water immediately. It should all be consumed within one to two hours after one hour, the potency or the effectiveness of the vaccine starts to drop significantly. Also, make sure all drinkers are clean, no soap residue, no chemical traces, and after vaccination, on the next day, give the birds a multivitamin. This helps reduce stress and boosts the immune response to the vaccine. Now, here's the most critical mistake farmers make. Vaccinating sick or stressed birds. This is dangerous. Vaccines contain weakened pathogens. If the bird's immune system is already compromised, that vaccine can overwhelm the bird and trigger a full-blown disease. Never vaccinate a bird that's coughing, has diarrhea, is heat-stressed, or shows signs of weakness. First treat or stabilize the flock, then resume the vaccination program. Also ensure vaccines are kept cold, between 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. At all times, use a cold box with ice packs if you're transporting them, and once opened, never store for future use. It's a single-use product, and now that you know how to vaccinate, your next question should be, how do I boost growth and performance after vaccination? Because even a vaccinated bird needs the right nutrition to hit target weights and egg numbers, so click on the video that's on your screen right now and check out our organic poultry ebook in the link in description of this video to discover the best natural supplement that doubled my broiler weight in just four weeks. It's the perfect follow-up to this guide. See you there.